Uh, welcome to the Fargo Conservation Commission public hearing on Monday, May 6, 2019 at 5.30. First floor of the uh, hearing room, one government center, Fall River. Uh, pursuant to the open meeting laws, any person to may, may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Yes, um, the first item on our agenda is election, election of a chair and vice chair. And the reason we need to do that is because our current chairman, Dennis Silva, was um, not reappointed by the mayor. Uh, he served uh, the Conservation Commission for in excess of, I believe, uh, a little over 10 years. And so with that, I will take nominations uh, for chair of the Conservation Commission. Do I have like any nominations? Yeah, like nominate John Brandt for chairman. Okay. Um, are there Second any other nominations? Okay. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, um, I will take a vote for Mr. Brandt to be chairman. Aye. Aye. Okay. I hear all in favor. Two Mr. One. Chairman, two. congratulations. Uh, now you need to. Uh, Accept nominations for vice chairman. We need to uh, now accept nominations for vice chair. Uh, I nominate Andy Ulyss. Thank you. Any other? I'll nominate me. Okay. Uh, vote for Andy. Can I vote for myself? Yes. And then I vote for myself. Andy, uh, vote for uh, Reverend Hornsby. Just one. Okay. okay. So, so it's Andy Ulyss. All right. So, Andy, you're now vice chair. Muzzled off. Okay. And we are, um, I have talked to the mayor's office about that we are two members shy, so of a five member board. We all, all three of you have to be here or we don't have a quorum. Right. And so I've been uh, working with the mayor's office to try to fill the two positions so we will have a full board. Um, I will keep you updated on that process. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Second on the agenda is notice of intent filed by Site Design Engineering Inc. on behalf of own applicant uh, Precision uh, Realty Properties LLC regarding project located at 300 Current Road, Assessors Map Z 3 104, to construct a building addition, develop elevation of existing concrete pad, improvement of an existing detention basin located partially within the 100 foot. Board of Vegetative uh, Wetland Buffer Zone, file number SE-24-721, uh, table from April 1st, 2019. Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, uh, good evening. Mike Russell, Site Design Engineering, uh, here tonight on behalf of the applicants for this notice of intent to uh, construct a 6,000 square foot building addition uh, adjoining the existing structure at 300 Current Road. Uh, when we met with you last, uh, we had presented the project uh, and there were some concerns, particularly from the city engineer and some of the commission members with the discharge of drainage, uh, namely the, <clears throat> the downspouts on the southwest corner of the building that were going to sheet up, that were going to overflow to that basin that would necessitate uh, improvements to that basin. So the city engineer made a suggestion, well, why don't we just go off the back corner, provide the practice that we're doing on the easterly elevation, and do the same thing for that half of the building. Mike, so that take a Thanks. Sure. Sorry. Thanks. 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 So that's what we did. So we added a little bit more beef to this system that, that is next to the building as to not do that so the flows wouldn't co-mingle and pick up uh, parking lot runoff, and I think that was a concern for the, for the members as well. So that's what we did. So in addition to that, that did not necessitate any improvement to that basin, so that work in the buffer zone won't happen, and uh, it's just the work associated with the building. So in the nearest point of that is just a hair under 40 feet to the, to the BBW. Uh, and I think Bill had mentioned uh, he wanted some clarification on the existing utilities as it related to site plan review, so we did that. We provided that as well. Do you have site plans for all the members? Yes.
Uh, one other item that was just a matter of housekeeping um, as it related to ongoing maintenance of the site for stormwater facilities. I think the commission had uh, talked about maintenance of the regular maintenance of the swale, vegetated swale that was along the frontage of the property. So the applicant has agreed to do that um, on a regular basis. I, we have representatives here from AA Precision Machine, so I, I believe that it's done twice a year. We've so seen it done. I don't know, how often have we seen them where they cut the, the swell? Yeah, it usually seems so a lot like once a year. Yeah. <clears throat> Usually when this when the grass grows, usually when the grass grows, the what do you call that grass in the soil? If that you could fails. speak up, this. Dude, I think they cut the city cuts it once a year. We've seen it. Some years it gets skipped, but when it gets cut, then we could clean it. It is probably on wall is probably about four or five feet high. So I think it was concern was was maintaining that that growth in there and then also cleaning it out. So I, I had asked the applicants to the does the city remove the the clippings and no they don't so somehow that's got to happen uh, along in that process I did a site visit yesterday actually in the rain so the, uh, the runoff did look pretty pretty good yesterday I was, I was surprised it wasn't a lot of collection where you have that down swale from the backside but everything looked like no was... I'd say a good 70 percent of the, the parking lot drains into the into the catch basin yeah yeah. Um, it's rather interesting. This is also simultaneously in for site plan review. That's kind of so we've been reviewing it as one package: conservation and site plan. Um, and so uh, our the city engineer and myself, we have um, reviewed it, and the city engineer is is uh, uh, fine with the revi the revisions. And uh, I know we had we had a lot of concerns before, so um, other than uh, so, from a site plan review and conservation standpoint, um, we don't have the the concerns anymore. And if you were to recommend uh, approval, it would be with the standard conditions and uh, erosion control uh, methods, uh, typically silt sock. Um, would need to be in place and maintained during construction and then any disturbed areas uh, uh, if they needed to be uh, revegetated I think that's a gravel area isn't it correct yeah so that wouldn't need to be revegetated but just uh, make sure that any disturbed areas are reestablished with either the vegetation or gravel would sure. be our recommend uh, staff's recommendation sure. for the project very good any other questions Me. So, can I have a motion for uh, the standard con uh, control con erosion condition uh, with silk socks and uh, revegetate or uh, re gravel area that's removed? I will make that motion. <laughs> yeah, I'll second that. Second. Pretty much in the language yes. that Bill said. Yeah. You and Bill okay. said. Yeah. Definitely. <coughs> Okay. Yeah. We should vote. Oh, vote. Yeah. Yeah. vote. All in favor? That's not my position to ask. You need to say all in favor. Oh, all in favor. <laughs> all in favor. Aye. All right. All right. Okay. Vote passes. Closed. Yep. Here we go. I'm busy. Yeah. Okay. I know I said aye. Oh, okay. So, all right. Yes. To put past. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have the revised plans uh, for site plan? Yes. How many do you need? I brought you three. Okay. You brought me or JR? You and both. Whoever wants them. <laughs> well, he has oh. a plan. Oh, that's okay. Thanks, Bill. We all serve the same. Put it on the site plan. Just let me know if that's it. Yeah, no. <laughs> you might all catch the Bruins and the Celtics. <laughs> oh, it's another easy one. I was on the fly this afternoon. Alrighty. Next on the agenda is a notice of intent filed by Mount Hope Engineering Inc. on behalf of owner, applicant, East Transport Club. 
regarding the project located at 104th and Club Road. Assessor's map Y-09-0043 to repair existing concrete retaining wall. Uh, we prepare an armor, existing shoreline with rock, sediment, removal, and inlet and outlet of existing basin. File number SE-24-723. Certified neck. Oh, this, she's looking for the certified mail card of the abutters. I think I left them in the office. I can get them for you. Yeah, that was on the bottom. That's all the you see that pop up? Keep on going further down, almost all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. No, that's not it. Nope. That's not it. I think I left all that stuff in the office. <laughs> Sorry, I can get it for you. Bring it in first thing in the morning. Okay. Um, I'm Todd Chaplin from Mount Hope Engineering, representing the East End Sportsman's Club. Um, the club's been in existence. Could you speak up? The club has been in existence for a very long time. I'm not sure if Mr. Lucio knows exactly when the club was formed, but most of this work was done back in the 60s where they created this little boat basin down on the uh, west shore of the South Wetupa Pond. This is just a small aerial, and there's essentially three, three small projects being done out here. There's a concrete seawall. This gray area you see here is actually wood decking. And there's a concrete seawall along the eastern edge of that. That wall has tilted out towards the cove on about a 40 degree angle or so. The intent is to essentially pull that back and we're going to put some uh, stainless steel re -rod, uh, stainless steel turnbuckles in there and dead mend that back into the bank. So essentially just pull that back into its original location. The second project is along the southern shore, which is this area here. Uh, about two-thirds of this has been maintained as a grassy bank for many years. Um, some of this other bank out here is a little bit overgrown. But the intent is to uh, protect that bank with some, with some sand and gravel and then some heavier stone. Uh, to essentially stop some of the erosion that happens along the bank and, and goes down into the basin. So the thought is that by protecting that bank and reinforcing it to some extent, that some of the siltation that's taken place over the years within this little basin can be prevented. Now when this basin was constructed, they created this little island from the, from the sediments that were, were removed. out of the way for a minute. So there's, there's a southern inlet and a northern inlet into the basin. And the third part of this project is to do some minor dredging within the basin just to restore the water depths to back to what they were. They've silted in. The, uh, the proposal is to maintain it less than 100 cubic yards of dredging, which is allowable. Um, under the Water Quality Act. And these, these brown boxes here are not necessarily intended to show exactly what's going to happen, but I wanted to just put it in an order of magnitude to what 100 cubic yards is like. And this is a 15 by 45 box that would be essentially two feet of removal would be about 50 yards. This box here is about uh, 15 by 30, uh, so that'd be about 30 cubic yards. So if they did essentially what I'm showing here, that'd be 80 cubic yards of material. Um, there's no real necessity to get in there and, and remove any more material than that, um, but it's just to restore the depths that were originally there. Um, and again, the, by protecting this uh, embankment on the uh, south side of the project, we think that'll prevent this from uh, eroding, uh, not eroding, but uh, erosion from causing sedimentation within the basin in the future. Um, I think they are hoping to start the project relatively soon uh, yes. with the board's blessing. So. Okay.
because the club grounds opens up May 30th. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. The club grounds open up May 30th. The campers will be there. So the dr uh, dredging, uh, any wildlife, uh, shellfish or anything? No, there was a report. We had natural. Uh, That's all that. The board should have had natural resources services who are uh, excellent uh, outfit. Um, did a habitat study that's all included in there. Right. There are no endangered species or any other um, habitat uh, of quality that they thought would be disturbed. They've actually made some comments within the report that uh, to some extent some of this riprap embankment provides almost a better embankment with ground cover and protective areas for uh, small wildlife in there. Um, there are a few scraggly trees, I'll call them, uh, along this bank that, you know, the, the club's willing to, to leave if the board felt there was a benefit to that um, and, and kind of work around them with the stones. Um, but there's no, there's no very uh, high quality vegetation along that area. Any questions from the board? Yep. Um, I was over there and talked to Mr. Gothier on the phone. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, the project looks fine. Um, I'm concerned that uh, assuming uh, there's that wild area to the south, you're not going to touch that at all. No. Nope. Good. And um, it looks like I. You might ask the, the consultant here. Well, what's the best thing? Um, there's a lot of brush that's been cut. Blow, stuff is blown down. But I'm really, so with the brush that's cut, there's a pile on the shoreline. And there's, it's obvious that that wild area is the place where you put the, where you put the cut brush and cut tree branches. Yeah. I I'm, I'm yeah. not sure what their normal practice is when they... Well, I, I do it there, just there. I saw it. No, and I've seen the brush you speak of. I just don't know if that's, you know, their intent is to... When they, when they cut some brush, I don't know if they intentionally go put it along the bank or not. Or it was my understanding that that's, we consider that the fishing area, all yeah. the way to the point and where it was. The kids were climbing up on the branches, so we cut some branches, I understand. But I didn't know they redeposited there because we're looking for wood for the fire of the barn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just. just okay, just, take it out. I, I mean, that's what I think, up. but I'm not, I'm not right. by no means am I an expert. I mean, I think, I think yeah. the best, any brush that gets cleared as part of this project should be cleared and you yeah. know, removed to a suitable location right. outside might, of the might bring the rest of it to limit of yeah, I'll take care of it. I, I didn't know that. But the project certainly is limited to this this area. There's there's, there's a gigantic section of uh, woods to the south. Um, and, you know, and there's no nothing's going in that direction at all. The, the limit of disturbance here is pretty Good. pretty well defined yeah, right you. around the project site here. These I'm pleased. These anchors are back 30 feet or so from the from the concrete wall, but other than room the machine needs to work here, there's no, and this is moving up no, slope not, away from the pond. Just, just, okay. just double checking. Yep. Okay. Um, we've taken a look at it, the city engineer and myself. Um, I think it's a benefit to, re uh, we don't want to see the uh, seawall fall in. Um, good luck pulling it back. <laughs> you might be back here for a reconstruction, <laughs> but that's, but, you know, we, I, I'm not a full engineer on that. Well, we've had some discussions with some contractors and stuff, and everybody seems to think that they'll be able to pull it. Yeah. Could it could crack an F when they do that? Yeah. It certainly is. And, and I'm sure that you, if you are back, I'm sure we can look at it. Um, some of the things we would recommend for condition is um, putting up erosion controls um, for the areas, uh, outside the areas, on uh, between where you're going to be uh, digging your pits and your dead men uh, along for where it would go over the, uh, uh, against the... Um, yep. We, we did call out some sill fencing along okay. the, the toe of the slope here because yes. the, they're going to be doing some excavation work here. At the top. So, so we, we did call out some of that. There. Um, I know in your point you talked about some erosion control methods and stuff regarding the, um, the riprap. Um, 
The top of the bank that is disturbed uh, would like condition to recommend that that be reseeded um, as, as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that that can that growth, if you're planning on getting it done now, then the growth should be able to be done in this season. And then um, regarding the uh, dredging is is and you've put that in your uh, narrative is that the um, I, I call them the silk curtains. Mm -hmm. uh, need to be in place, uh, inspected, and maintained during um, during dredging activities. So those would be the conditions we would have. And an additional condition that was brought up by uh, Reverend Hornsby is is that the um, existing uh, piled brush that is in and around the area of the bank that's been there uh, to be removed. Yeah, that can be cleaned up as part of yeah, this. Yeah, cleaned while, up as part of it. While we're so. You have the erosion control for the the wall, the erosion control methods for the um, as described in your narrative for the bank stabilization and revegetation of the bank, removal of the old of the cut vegetation that's existing there, and these uh, silk curtains need to be in place, inspected and um, maintained. It's all reasonable. So and. Uh, prior to excavation, call a conservation line, and we'll come out to make sure that, uh, to inspect the silk curtains and the silk fence. Is that fair? That sounds okay. reasonable. That's what I would recommend, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Can I have a motion for uh, erosion control outside where they're gonna be digging? And uh, putting the dead man's in. Also, erosion, uh, rewrap wall uh, by the walls and seating after uh, they're done. Uh, silk curtain uh, to be installed during uh, dredging and inspected by um, the building inspector. The conservation um, agent. That'd be conservation me. agent. Prior to dredging. Before uh, dredging. Um, and I have a motion. And the removal, removal of the vegetation. Re and also yeah. the removal of uh, the vegetation uh, bushes. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Yeah. Brush. Yeah. Second? Second. Uh, can I have a vote? Aye. 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 Vote passes. Thank you. Can you just look at your name? Uh, Todd Chapman. Todd? Todd. Todd. T-O-D-D. -D. Chapman like Charlie. <laughs> you know. I use that line all the time and I get blank stares now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she, yeah, sometime yeah. in the sometime you. beginning of the work day tomorrow, you'll get the stuff. Thank yep. you. <laughs> Thank you. Next, uh, number four request for determination of accessibility filed by Linda Gear regarding confirmation. Uh, that uh, there are no wetlands, the BPA or locally re re regulated resource areas in the lot located at Nicholas Street. Assessor's map R-03-0101, file number uh, RDA-163. Good evening. I'm Dave Pickard with Ecological Resource Consultants and here on behalf of Linda Greer. Uh, this is a small vacant lot, about a third of an acre, located on the north side of Nickel Street, near the intersection with Ray Street. Um, the reason why I'm here is there is a small isolated wetland on this property. It's about 300 square feet in size. It's been looked at by two different consultants. Um, the lot is in the process of uh, being sold because uh, it was owned by Linda Greer's parents and uh, they're... Could you? Sorry. Owned by Linda Greer's parents. They've passed away. Uh, she has to take care of this property as part of the estate. Um, so it's planned on being sold. She's actually had some interest. Um, Again, there is a small isolated wetland along the western side of the lot, up against the house that was uh, built in the last couple of years. Um, 
In my opinion, uh, this wetland is not regulated under the Wetlands Protection Act. Why is that? Because it doesn't border on a pond or a stream, uh, it doesn't drain to a pond or a stream, and it isn't fed by a pond or a stream. Isolated wetlands are sometimes regulated under the Wetlands Protection Act as isolated land subject to flooding. There's a volumetric requirement. Um, basically, they have to hold a quarter acre feet at least once each year to a depth of six inches, at least once each year. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you again. It was something once each year. Has to hold a quarter acre foot at least once each year to a depth of six inches to at least once each year. I still don't understand you. It's a question of not hearing or not understanding your, your sentence. I, I'm talking about the start definite... From the, start from the beginning on the, on the isolated wetland, the land subject to flooding. Isolated land subject to flooding has to hold a quarter acre foot of water at least once a year to a depth, a minimum depth of six inches. Okay. This wetland is about 350 square feet. Right. A quarter acre foot is roughly 11,000 cubic feet. So to be regulated as ILSF, or isolated land subject to flooding, the water in this depression would have to be about eight feet deep. Um, that is physically impossible. It would spill out over Nickel Street and into all the abutting lots, which I am told does not happen. Additionally, when I looked at it back in March, um, it didn't have any standing water in it. Uh, there was soil saturation within about four inches of the ground surface, but there was no surface water present in the floor. And I don't know if you folks know, but we are about 30 inches above rainfall since September of this past year. So you would expect that it would have some standing water in it. <laughs> uh, so those are the reasons why, in my opinion, it, it doesn't meet the criteria to be regulated as isolated land subject to flooding. Uh, there are other resource areas that the Wetlands Protection Act regulates. Riverfront area, you have to be within 200 feet of a perennial water course. There are no perennial water courses within about 1,000 feet of this particular site. Or uh, if it's located in the 100-year floodplain, it would be regulated as bordering land subject to flooding. I've included a copy of the floodplain map for this area and it's, it's not in the floodplain. So this is a small, isolated feature. It's basically a shallow hole in the ground, um, probably formed because way back when uh, fill was brought into this site and it differentially settled. Um, it does meet the criteria to be regulated as a water of the United States under sections 401 and 404 of the Clean It Water Act. Those are administered by the Army Corps of Engineers and DP. So what I'm seeking from you folks is a negative determination, basically confirming that there's no Wetlands Protection Act regulated resource areas on this property. The reason for that being is to facilitate a sale. Uh, apparently there was a sale in place uh, earlier this year and the buyer balked because they saw a wetland on the property. I was on the property yesterday and, looked, uh, and walked quite a bit through it and I didn't see any standing water in that site. Yep. But on the right hand side, the neighbor's backyard did have some standing water in Over the back. There. Yeah. So I was just wondering, I don't know if that's... If, Right. Uh, we give the okay if the site is leveled and how to run off when that is. Is that something right. I too walked there. I, I too walked there last Saturday. And uh, I, there was not standing water there. There was a neighbor had some standing water. Um, 
I can tell you that my feet were wet after I walked through it. Well, I can tell you that. I should have worn my rubbers. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's pretty wet. I mean, I just, and I don't fully understand the, uh, I've not had really had time to research the law. I mean, you've just reeled it off and it's down here. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's something I deal with every day for 35 right. well, years. I, I so, so I, I don't do, deal with it every I do day. know it. Most um, of the most, and I'm fairly new on the committee, yep. so that I've not had the chance to um, look at, or I guess you call it isolated wetlands. Um, I'd like to lay it over for a month, just a chance, just to check it all out. Uh, and uh, I guess I, I'd move to table it until next month. For a specific, specific purpose? To understand the, the rationale and the engineering. Okay. And There's, the wetlands law. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, if, if you. Reverend Hornsby's made a motion. Uh, do we have a second on the motion? My only concern with the site was, is, is there something, uh, I don't know if the site's well, wetlands, but uh, how, how is it going to affect the border and lots? Well, uh, is there something we should put in there, um, a catch basin or something? Or no, I mean, well, I've taken a look at it, and I believe that applicant has demonstrated that he is that they met the letter of the law of the Wetland Protection Act, that this is an isolated wetland, not subject to flooding, and that, you know, is not a regulated wetland under the Wetlands Protection Act. I believe that the, the applicant has demonstrated that. Um, I will um, be kind of in a quandary if um, Reverend Hornsby would like additional time to, to verify that. Mind you, right. um, you, you've got a problem in that we have a five member board we only have three members you need a hundred percent or you know for a negative determination you can't have two out I mean, of I, I, you're forcing me to vote no i i if i understand if we don't delay and I, and I then don't really want to do that yeah, because i knew both of the previous owners mm -hmm. and respected them enormously yep walked to walked against war with dr greer mm -hmm. And I really don't want to, I don't know why there is, is such a rush. Well, uh, I can speak from my client's perspective. She'd like to get this wrapped up so she can sell the lot. That's Well, that's we got it about 10 days ago in the, in the commission. I think sometime after the middle of April. And we're talking about another month. Yeah, I, I mean, if, if, if clearly I'm not going to ask you to close a hearing that is not going to have a vote, right. that's, that's so pointless. I, because I, I would recommend that you reconsider catch, catch 22. Reverend uh, Hornsby's request to look at additional time. I can prepare a, a, a review of it with a city engineer, line by line of the of the law, and you can also look at it too. We perhaps we can meet about it, and you you can yeah. come in and meet with us, and we can go line by line uh, of the what the law states. So um, with that, you know, I think you should, because because you were in a quandary and you have a three member board. Right. Everything at this point has yeah. to be unanimous, yeah. okay. and I don't want to see. This be denied for right. just lack of information. Okay, fair enough. So, can we have reconsideration on Reverend Hornsby's uh, motion to the table? Sure. Second vote. Aye. Aye. So it's continued to the date Aye. certain would be because we don't have to re-advertise. If, um, if anybody would like me. To accompany them and go out and look at it. I mean, uh, it's you know again, 
I do this all the time. I'm actually so, a conservation agent in two towns. So, so in where? Pardon? In where? I'm the conservation agent for the town of Northbridge and the town of Upton. I know the regs very well, um, right. probably too well at times because I dream about them sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of continued but, to but, June 3rd? Yeah. June 3rd. But if someone, the, the soils out there are very clear cut, you know, hydric, non-hydric, and there's a difference in the vegetation too. I, I can understand that there's standing water in a neighboring lot. Um, looking at hundreds of sites over the last three months, there's water coming out of the sides of hills right now. So. Would you like to make an appointment? To yeah. yeah, I would. I think I emailed you, didn't I? Yes, you yeah. did. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, um, the problem, okay. what I would like to do is uh, meet with Bill to okay. understand more. Okay. And then meet with you. Yep. That's, and that's if other fine. members think we want a mutual time, we can do that. Yep. Yeah. And if there's three of you want to meet, then I'll just I'll note I'll advertise it as a meeting on site. Yep. If it's just two of you, then I don't have to. Gotcha. So, so there's a motion to continue. Did you to yeah, the June third? Yeah. June third. Well, I move we table till June third. Yeah. Was there a vote? There was yep. a vote. Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. All set. Thank you. Yeah. All good. Thank you. Yep. All set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. You too. All right. Uh, next is extend, uh, extension permit for uh, orders of condition filed by CHA Consulting on behalf of Liberty Utilities regarding an extension permit for work at Brickman Street Bridge, Brickman Street Bridge, Assessors Map S-21 Row, File Number SE-24-672. Just as a side note, when you, when you submit something to the city planner, you should make sure you get the name of the city planner, uh, the current one, correct. I, I understand that, and I apologize. And, and, and you misspelled the previous guy's name. Bill <laughs> Kenny, yeah. Well, that's good advice. <laughs> My name is Jay Hall. I work with CHA Consulting. You need to speak a little louder, please. Oh, okay. My name is Jay Hall. I work with CHA Consulting. And we are requesting an extension for the uh, Taunt River Pipeline Replacement Project. And um, I just wanted to go over what's been done on the project so far and what we need to get the extension done. Uh, the extension expires on September 19th of this year. And so we're requesting that additional time be allotted for um, the final work. So I will try to ah, it's okay. make some order out of the disorder of all the colors. Um, I'm going to have you look at this side because that's the Fall River side. It uh, is actually a pipeline crossing or was uh, of the Taunton River. This is Somerset, this is Fall River, so I'll have you focus on that. I'm giving you the overall picture so I can kind of go over some of the resources that we have. Uh, the pink is actually a Corps of Engineers federal navigation project, uh, and those are the limits of it. Um, they're requiring that the pipelines, once they've been abandoned in place, get removed from that area. And so that's, uh, that's the part of the project that we've not completed yet. This is actually an HDD. This, that was a stage one project that was done in um, 2016. Uh, actually, the fall of 2016 and winter 2017, uh, it's about 1,200 feet. It's about 20 feet below the river at the deepest depth. Uh, and that was installed, um, that incident, and is actually up and running. These kind of muted yellow colors are three existing lines that are on, sitting on the bottom of the river. Um, one of them, I believe this one is 1959, was abandoned, but it's still there. That's going to be removed. And then the two operational six inch lines, um, which were abandoned once the horizontal directional 12 inch steel line um, was installed. Uh, so basically, what happened was the horizontal directional drill has been installed. 
Um, and so, uh, and that was done in the fall of 2016 and winter of 2017. It's up and running. These other lines have been abandoned. And um, in the fall of uh, September, actually, of 2017, uh, Liberty Utilities, oh, I'm sorry, Gary Monroe, <laughs> Director Gary <laughs> of Operations and Engineering, uh, he's with Liberty Utilities. Um, in, in September of um, 2017, uh, these pipelines actually were, the idea was to actually excavate drip pots and, um, and T valves, T bends, basically to cut those out and send cleaning pigs through the pipelines themselves to clean them before they were cut in these areas. Um, it was determined by Liberty Utilities, which uh, actually ended up being a, a positive thing from a number of standpoints, to actually fill them with a grout. It's called cellular, cellular fill. It's kind of a foam concrete mix. And what, that, what they did was they in, uh, pushed all that material into the pipes and it sets it's like a concrete and basically any um, residual liquids are bound up in that area. So then when you cut those out, nothing comes out. Um, the other thing is the exact time that the work was completed was approximately a year ago right now, late April, early May of 2018. The plan was in September and then it was delayed until after the winter. And it was completed last, last well, a year ago. So. We originally had stage one, that's done. The pipeline's in, it's operational. We have these abandoned pipelines now which have been grouted, so there's basically um, any material in the pipe is bound up. And so the next step is to remove these uh, sections within the Federal Navigation River and abandon in place um, the pipelines on the Somerset and the Fall River side. Uh, because the pipelines have been grouted, we don't have to go in and clean the pipelines themselves. That means we don't have to dig out, excavate at the edge of Coastal Beach and Coastal Bank, those areas, excavate them, cut them out, and then fill them back up. That means we don't have to do any sort of excavation work in Coastal Beach or Coastal Bank, which is a plus. Also, we don't have to do any work. Now we will go to the next one. Let's see. So this is the site. Um, so basically we don't have to do any excavation down the slope of grading because we no longer need any heavy equipment to get down to excavate those T-bends and drip pots. So what's going to happen is we've got the three pipelines to remove in the river. Those are going to be done with barges and mounted cranes and divers. Um, there are a number of resources here. Do they, are they laying on the bottom? They're lying on the bottom, yes. Oh, okay, so the new line is buried. The old lines were just laying on the bottom. The new line is a horizontal directional drill. Okay. And that was done by Oz Horizontal right. Directional Drilling. Um, definitely deeper, up to 20 feet right. in places. Um, the core actually required it, and from an environmental standpoint, much, um, much right. less impact. And so basically, these lines will be removed. We're no longer required to move the drip pots and the T-bends at uh, Coastal Beach and Coastal Bank. And so there's a concrete block uh, housing which houses a above ground um, shutoff valve. Yeah, valve. Basically those are the only two things above ground, above mean high water, that we're going to have to be um, removing. And then the rest it will be by barges and by, um, by, by cranes and, and divers, that type of thing. Just to let you know, so basically these are the, the muted color is the um, pipelines that are going to be removed. That is mean high water, just so you understand where that resource is. That resource has a 25 foot riverfront area, as you know. Uh, there is an actual FEMA uh, land subject coastal storm flow um, line, that's basically a FEMA flood zone. And then your top of coastal bank is identified. Uh, according to land subject coastal storm flowage and the pitch of the um, uh, slopes itself. It actually isn't something that I do any on the field. Um, Where are you cutting it? It's going to be cut right here. Basically what's going to happen is it's a uh, above ground um, shut off valve in that block house. They're going to take the block house out. They're going to cut the above ground valve up down about maybe one or two feet. Cap it, fill in the area, we vegetate it, walk away. Um, the nice thing is that if we go back to this... Where are you cutting the pipe that, that you're removing? Oh.
the pipe that we're going to be removing is going to be cut approximately 25 feet outside of the Federal Navigation Program channel, which is those two pink lines. So probably about 25 feet out, they're going to cut it and cap it right here. They're going to remove this part, and they're going to bend it in place the remaining pieces just so okay. to impact the, the wetland resources. That okay. Thing. Uh, so what will happen is um, because we've adjusted the um, abandonment procedure, they'll probably set up a crane in this area to be able to pick up the concrete block houses. They'll fill in a pan, uh, put a lot of material in, and they'll basically pick it up and you know put it over into this area, which is an open, maintained, grassy field area, and they'll cart that away. They'll take the above ground T-valves, excuse me, above ground shutoff valves, uh, pick those up, put those in the area as well, and they can cart all that stuff off. Um, and then basically, that'll happen before sometime probably this summer. And then basically, once we get to um, uh, September 15th, because it's a fishery, um, and the Division of Marine Fisheries wanted us to only remove pipeline disturb uh, material in the, in the water between September 15th and January 15th to protect fisheries like well, we've got land subject, uh, land, let's see. We've got the, a, a series of fisheries, winter flounder is a big one, there's also sturgeon. And then um, you've got land containing self, shellfish as well, which I think is gonna be razor clams, soft shell clams, and coax. So basically if everything is done in the fall, there's gonna be less impact on the breeding season, that type of thing. And when does your order, order expire? It expires in September 19th of this year. And you won't be finished by then? We're not allowed to actually go into the water until, until after. <laughs> okay. So we'll have four days. So okay. basically the idea is to, to come in and okay. make sure that we... we and you're we've seeking got, a one-year extension, correct? Uh, I would actually prefer to get two in case something happens. We okay. plan to get the work done this year. Okay. But in case something happens, storms, whatever, okay. something else, we need additional time, I'd like to get it done. I'd, I'd extend for two years rather than one. Okay. And actually, some of our other permits are. This has a Corps of Engineers for. Oh, you, you, <laughs> you have Chapter 91, a Corps. You, you, you've got. <laughs> we get everything. You, you've got, got a half a dozen federal we, permits we, for we've this. We've got the whole work. Everything more. is still active. It's yeah. And so we, we need to get this done. And let's okay. get done now. But just in case, I don't want to have to come back to you folks again. Mm -hmm. So we'd rather get two years and presuming we're not going to need it. And your original order, I, don't, I haven't looked uh, through the original file, the, what's your procedure for um, for remediating where you're removing the, the concrete? Now you're only going to remove the concrete pad. Right, the concrete blockhouse yeah. and then up, above ground um, shutoff valve. And basically it's just going to be once any disturbed soil will just revegetate with kind of a herbaceous. You're going to add soil back to fill the hole in? Whatever you need to add, yeah. Whatever, if we have and to. Then, and then reestablish vegetation? Right, and we'll probably just put in um, a conservation mix okay. and then allow the area to revegetate naturally. Okay. And then basically the, the pink is erosion controls. Yeah. I realized it's pink was erosion controls here and it was the yeah. Federal Navigation Channel, but yeah. I was running out of colors. So, Alrighty. so um, does anybody have any questions? No, I, I, I was on the board when we voted this uh, on this project. So you're going to follow the same conditions that we voted. So absolutely, just we just, it's a matter of just we didn't quite we're not we're quite able to get, <laughs> yeah. get the final part. One thing: uh, so sure. the pipes that you're removing are filled. You have them filled with this concrete mix. Right. So almost no impact whatsoever when pulling it out. Correct. Right. It, it's going to be set. They're basically just going to be steel encased with concrete. So they'll have, be heavy. But they'll pick, they'll cut the pieces in sections, and then pick them up with cranes on barges, and they'll have actually divers down there. Great. Okay. And unfortunately, that's part of the reason it took so long, because it's it's fairly deep in the bottom. I'm talking. Here's the water surface, 70 feet down. So. Oh, the so they're limited on time. Well, yeah, exactly. So what happened was they're going to try like to get 30 it minutes, and they got to come back up. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So it's it's a matter of it getting down, cutting the pipe, you know, getting a rotation of divers in there. And I guess it was... Uh, 30 minutes doesn't get you a lot of time. No, it doesn't. And the other concern that caused us to not go forward was the weather. Wind conditions really have to cause delays because the crane is going to be actually quite large to pull these out, and so you've got to have safe water conditions. Yeah. We're thinking late September, middle October should be the best conditions. So that would be the plan. 
Yes. Any other questions? So can I have a motion to uh, grant an extension for two years with the so move. existing? Yes. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 We'll pass it. Thank you. If you have Thank any questions, my contact information is on there. We're going to make sure we contact Carbon Masters and the Corps and everybody else to make sure that before this is done, everybody's aware of what's going on. Yeah, I'll contact myself, Gary. No problem. Good luck. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Interesting. No it won't be like the uh, the towers coming down, but it might be yeah. some spectators. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be that fast. <laughs> that no, it won't be that fast. Six, six seconds, seven seconds. Yeah, that was incredibly fast. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Next is uh, Notification from National Grid, grid submitted uh, March 28, 2019, regarding uh, Bates Street substation work at 175 Bates Street. I just need a motion to put this on file. Make motion for file. We receive it, place it on file. Yeah. Uh, next one is notification from uh, Tech Associate, submitted April 23, 2019, regarding the Massachusetts Coastal Railroad. 2019 yearly operational plan. I just need a motion to put this on file. I'll make a motion. motion. Move. Second. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion for approval of the minutes? I have a motion for the minutes. Voted. Aye. 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 Uh, any public input? Nope. Motion for adjournment. A motion to adjourn. Motion being adjourned. What's that? Aye. Okay. Right. I just had a funny question. If if a citizen wanted to come up and speak on one of the issues, it wasn't the public input is at the end. Um, if a citizen, we're off. Oh, you guys are. We're done. Oh, Mo right. Yeah. 